All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be talking about how to set up another game controller. This particular tutorial will cover how you plug in your PS4 controller to your PC and use it with the Steam client. Something that I'm sure not a lot of people know is that Steam fully supports not just the Xbox controller, but also the PS4 controller and pretty much any third party controller that you can find at like Walmart or Amazon. And all you really need to do is grab a, a cord or enable Bluetooth on your PC so that you can connect your PS4 controller and you can get it running. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is I'm gonna open up Steam's big picture mode. You can do a lot of these edits through the regular Steam preferences, but I find it a little bit easier to get your controllers running through big picture. To access Big Picture, you go to the upper right-hand corner of your Steam window, it's this little controller icon. You click it, and that'll make everything pop up for you. For those of you who might not be super familiar or don't use Steam Big Picture mode a lot, it's basically just the console-style interface for Steam that turns Steam into a fancy little dashboard. And once you've got this open, all you gotta do is find the little settings gear up at the top. Again, it's in the upper right-hand corner and go ahead and click on that. Now, the reason why I recommend using the big picture mode settings as opposed to Steam's preferences is I find they're a little bit more concise and better organized, and all of your controller stuff is right up front right here. So the first thing you gotta do is you have to enable the PS4 support for Steam. It is not enabled by default, and you'll find it under the basic controller settings. In here, you'll have to click to enable PS4 configuration support, I would also encourage you to enable Xbox configuration support in case it's not activated by default. Mine was. And then if you ever want to use something like a flight stick for a flying game like Elite Dangerous or any other type of controller, I would also recommend enabling generic gamepad configuration support. Once you've done that, go ahead and plug in your PS4. Well, not your PS4, but your PS4 controller. You should hear a little bloop sound to let you know that it is in fact plugged into your computer, and it should then show up on this little list of detected devices. Right here, it's the unknown controller, which I will go ahead and select. And really what it wants you to do is go to preferences and name this controller so that it can be registered to your account and it can help keep track of it. This window is gonna allow you to do a couple of things. You can turn on or off, the rumble pack in your controller, which can be nice if you find it annoying. You can also change the light on the back side of your PS4 controller so that you can customize it if you have multiple PS4 controllers hooked up to the same computer. That way you can tell them apart. You can adjust the brightness of the light and you can also adjust the overall color saturation until it's just a blank, random white color. Once you're done with that, you can just hit submit and you're more or less good to go. Right now, the PS4 controller is mimicking an Xbox controller, so all of the keys will mirror whatever you would see on an Xbox controller. And if you really want to adjust it after that, you can back out of here and go to base configurations and change the button configurations for use in desktop mode, where you can actually set this up to mimic like a mouse if you want. You can change how it functions in big picture configuration, which is how it controls when you're using this particular interface. Although, so far, I've mostly found that this works all right, right out of the box. The only difference is that it doesn't have anything bound to the right joystick, and there's nothing bound to the touchpad. You can actually make it so that your touchpad functions just like a mouse pad on a laptop. So we can go to game action. Let's go with mouse cursor. We won't add any additional functionality. Uh, we could use trackball mode. I think that's where it just uses your finger gestures to control the mouse controls. So we'll back out of here. And Steam's system allows you to do everything. You can utilize the accelerometer slash gyroscope inside of your game controller, which is what this icon is. And you can rebind every single key to do just about anything. This also includes the ability to add actions, where you can add like different move sets that will function differently in different games. Really, everything in this system was originally designed for use with the fancy Steam controller and has been more or less ported over for functionality on Xbox controllers and PS4 controllers and pretty much anything that gets plugged in here. 
Now it's worth noting that if you go into the desktop settings, there's really nothing set up here. You'll have to set these up yourself. I will not be going into the nitty gritty of how each one of these settings functions in this tutorial. I'm also not sure if I'll go over that in any great detail in a future tutorial, but you'll have to set this particular one up all on your own. The other feature that I found really nice is that you can actually bind different buttons on your controllers so that it'll actually send a keyboard button press signal to your computer as opposed to actually having to have your keyboard with you when you're gaming. So let's say one of the shoulder buttons doesn't necessarily need to be used with whatever game you're playing. You can set that up to be like a backspace or escape button to really quickly bring up the menu or something. You got a lot of versatility here. You can also set up to put out like a mouse button click. It's got a whole bunch of different buttons here. You just click on them. You click on which one of these buttons you want it to function as. You can also set up to take screenshots, disable hotkeys, whatever. All that functionality is up here. Or at least I think that's disable hotkeys. I'm not sure what that particular button does. So that's really all you need to do to get your controller set up and working. I find that the defaults work very well out of the box, but you can tweak things as you go. And if you want to add your own key bindings per game, once you load into the game, you can go back to the big picture mode area by simply hitting the PS4 button, which is also known as the Steam button if this was a Steam controller. And then it'll bring up this window. You can go back to your controller configurations and you can actually map key bindings to a specific game on the fly so that each one of your games is specially customized. Sometimes it works particularly well, sometimes it doesn't. I've had a mixed bag when testing it out, but it's all right. Again, I mostly use the default configuration, so I'm pretty happy with that as it is. And that's all you gotta do to get it running. Just set up, set up Steam so that it says, hey, let's use PS4 controller support, plug it in, register it to your Steam account, or at least to your computer, and then you're ready to go and start pressing buttons. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or need more information, please feel free to leave those in the comments below, and I will catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a good one, everybody.